All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna to be going over hosting in the cloud versus hosting locally on your own hardware with your own internet. Which one should you choose and for what? And really, this is not a one-size-fits-all answer because it completely depends, and pretty much all businesses have some stuff that they should be hosting locally and some stuff that they should be running in the cloud. And the real question is just, which should you put where? And for you home lab tinkerers, the exact same thing is true. For example, I recommend most people's websites be hosted on a cloud server somewhere. You can spin up a AWS instance on AWS LightSail for like five bucks a month. And it's going to have a public IP address, pretty much 100% uptime, and you're probably not gonna need enough performance to get outside of that tier. But at the same time, for most businesses and most people, having their NAS, their main file server, living in the cloud probably does not make sense from a price and performance perspective. So it really depends on which thing you're talking about, and that's what we're gonna be going over in this video. So in really broad strokes, hosting the cloud versus hosting locally can kind of be parameterized into four key areas. Resiliency, price, performance, and scalability. Those are really the four key areas that you look at whenever you're deciding should something go in a cloud server or be hosted locally. So the first key area that we're talking about here is resiliency. And resiliency is the reason why you stick stuff in the cloud. Resiliency is almost always going to be stronger when you're hosting something in the cloud versus hosting something locally. And when I say cloud, I mean AWS, DigitalOcean, Microsoft Azure, those clouds. The reason you go to the cloud most of the time is because you don't want to deal with the resiliency. You don't want to deal with making sure that if your power goes out, your website stays up. You don't want a truck to hit a power line and now your entire web server's down. You don't want somebody to push a bad update to your host and now all your VMs are crashing. The reason you go to the cloud in general is for that resiliency. And that's why things like websites and email a lot of time make a lot of sense to go to the cloud. That's because really, if you're down, you still want those things to be up. But other things like file servers don't necessarily need that same resiliency because if you're at the office and the power's out and nobody can access the file server because it's at the office where the power's out, it's probably not that big of a deal. And so that's one of the key parameters with it. Then when it comes to price, price tends to be pretty easy to tell. Is it more expensive or not for the same amount? So if we're talking about an application that has to have resiliency, unless you're a massive company, and even then, it's probably cheaper to deploy in the cloud for the same level of resiliency than it is to build out that resiliency on your own local servers. AWS and all of those cloud servers spend a whole lot of money making sure that they can survive unforeseen events in a way that honestly, even Fortune 500 companies struggle to do, and that's why so many of them end up in the cloud. The other reason why a lot of large companies end up with major portions, if not all of their infrastructure in the cloud, is that scalability factor. When you have to plan five years out for server purchases and acquisitions, it becomes very expensive and hard to shift from one area to another. But with the cloud, there is a major pro there of being able to just spin up new instances and gain additional hardware in the click of a few buttons. So the ability to just simply say, hey, we are getting 5,000 times as much traffic as we usually get on this one service. Let's go ahead and scale it up by that amount. And then once that's done, scale it back down and not have to pay for that extra hardware is a major reason why massive companies go to the cloud because even if they could get that same hardware and deploy it for cheaper, maintaining it and planning it is just incredibly difficult when you compare it to just being able to click a button and get more resources. Finally, the last parameter is going to be performance. And performance is fascinating because it is one of those things where it's got pros and cons for both the cloud and locally hosted. For example, a locally hosted NAS is always going to be faster than a NAS in the cloud for your local employees. 
But if you've only got 10 megabit internet, then having anything in the cloud is probably going to be faster for everybody but you. But these are the four parameters that it's easy to kind of look at and play with whenever you're thinking about deploying something in the cloud, deploying it locally, because those are the real pros and cons that you can boil most things down to. All right, so now I want to go over two very easy things that I recommend the vast majority of people put in the cloud and basically offload to somebody else's problem, and that is web servers and email. Both web servers and email are stuff that can be hosted locally fairly easily. You've got a business internet connection, you can set up a mail server, and you can definitely set up a website to be running on a Synology or something else. But the really big problem with that is that resiliency factor. And that is why I tend to recommend most people, especially for their website and email, just do that in the cloud. Pay Google or Microsoft to handle your email for you because email is too important as a business owner. Running a locally hosted email server is great, but the problem is you have to constantly be fighting and making sure your emails are getting delivered in a way that you just don't have to if Google is handling your emails for you. Now, obviously for home labbers and tinkers who don't need that resiliency factor, who are not going to lose a $5 million sale because an email does not go through and now their competitor gets it. That is where absolutely being able to tinker around and play around with email and know that, you know, if emails don't get delivered, it's a learning experience. Those are people who absolutely can handle the email and the web stuff locally, but for companies who can lose massive amounts of money by email not going through or emails bouncing, I highly recommend you set up your email servers in the cloud because they are then somebody else's problem to deal with. You don't have to worry about getting an email bounce because the office power goes down or because the previous owner of your IP address was sending a bunch of spam, now you're on block lists. You just don't have to worry about that kind of stuff when you send your email servers and offload that stuff to the cloud. But in my opinion, those are the two major easy ones to say, yeah, probably makes sense for the cloud for most people. But then the rest of the stuff is actually very useful to host locally in a lot of cases. And first off, a NAS. Unless you are just like a law firm or an accountant who has very minimal file requirements, under 100 gigs of files, in most cases, I think it makes a lot of sense to just have everything hosted on a local NAS. And then we can talk about backups of the cloud, but having physical access to your files and being able to physically see it is going to make things a lot easier especially if you have an office where the majority of your employees come in and work off of this local file server, it is so ingrained with being able to be integrated directly into Word, where if somebody else tries to open a Word document that another person's modifying, it'll say, hey, such and such has already opened this. Do you wanna open a read-only copy? There are so many things that are set up for a local NAS that just work that you really lose out when you're going to the cloud. You don't have to deal with trying to figure out how to download SharePoint files and upload them again anytime you need to modify anything. You don't have to run into syncing statuses if you just use a local NAS. Stuff like that, especially if you've got an office where everybody comes in, is so useful to have. And you get far better performance. So if you need high performance, you're a video editor, you're a photographer, and you need to be able to move terabytes of data around, unless you've got an insanely fast internet connection, you're just not gonna be able to get anywhere close to the level of performance you would be able to with a local NAS. 10 gigabit networking is not that hard to deploy now. So if you want to create an insanely fast video editing file server, there is no reason to put that in the cloud because your clients are never gonna have that fast of a connection to them. But if everybody's in a room together working, then you can move files at over one gigabyte per second without sinking thousands of dollars into hardware. Having a local file server for video production houses and photographers in any massive media groups out there is, in my opinion, a must, especially if employees come in. Even if employees don't come in, having a cloud setup for your video production is really hard to do. 
a lot of the main nonlinear editors just do not work well with third-party software that's synchronizing these files and you run into issues. And that's actually where you can bring all of your employees' desktops local and use something like Parsec by having like five Mac minis in the office that everybody just remotes into and works off of. And that's where that local connection really shines because now you can get this insanely fast performance that you just could not get in the cloud. You just do not have the ability to hook up exactly your exact configuration and have the ultra low latency for any affordable price in the cloud like you can trivially with a local connection. So because of that and the massive fees associated with data in the cloud, I generally don't recommend putting your main file server in the cloud just because it eats up a ton of bandwidth costs that you just cannot get out of. Not only do you lose out on performance, now every time somebody downloads a file, you are paying by the gigabyte. And sometimes that is incredibly expensive. Just doing basic things like sending a 10 gigabyte video file to somebody can cost you in the sense level. And so it's one of those things where just getting your data out of the cloud in those cases can become so expensive and you just have that reoccurring cost versus with local hardware, you can buy it once and never pay for it again. And then that leads us to the next question and that's your backups. Should you send your backups to the cloud or local? And that is a huge question on exactly how much data you need because in general, data is going to be the single largest expense, especially when we're talking about backups. That's because if you're trying to back up something like a 15 terabyte file server, you have to pay to store that data in the cloud indefinitely. That is a monthly fee that is just not going to go away. And in general with backups, you don't generally need the same level of resiliency and uptime with a backup than you do with something like a website. It's because if your backup goes down for even two days, it's not great, but it's not like anybody has stopped being able to work and you're not losing business. So even in those worst case scenarios, in general, having your own backup where you can bring it to another office or just set up at the owner's house is a great way to save money and the restore process can be so much better. For example, let's say I've got 50 terabytes of files across a whole bunch of computers and NASes and things at the office. If I was to try to restore all of that data from a cloud, I could be there for weeks. But if you have the ability to drive a few miles or even drive five hours to pick up that backup, drive it back and reload the data on a local network connection, you can save massive amounts of times for restoring your files because you can do a thing called sneaker net. You don't have to worry about how fast your download speed is anymore because you have now done this all on a local network connection. And so really when it comes to backups, the biggest question is how much data do you have to back up? NASA's, I tend to recommend you look at buying your own hardware to back up locally to your own physical backup server at about the five terabyte mark. At about five terabytes and beyond, the cost to buy a NAS and set up as a backup target is going to pay for itself in general within the first year when you compare against backing up to a cloud. And so that's why I really like having backups locally and backing up to your own physical hardware because it's that one-time fee. Maybe a one-time fee every five years versus a monthly reoccurring cost and if you do it right, it can also be very expandable. So that's the gist of these things, but there's so much more nuance there that really comes down to what exactly you're doing. I say for most websites, it makes sense to host them in the cloud because in general, websites do not require that much performance to run. You need very little CPU cycles and you can run most websites, even with hundreds or even thousands of viewers a day on a $5 Amazon instance. And it's just so cheap that it makes sense to do it. But there's a lot of websites that don't. If your website is doing real stuff, if your website is doing deep calculations, then that is where it can be a lot cheaper to have that local hardware. Because when you're talking about small services, 
they're very cheap to deploy in the cloud. And that's kind of that, they call it the gateway drug. That is that gateway into the cloud because you can spin up a few very cheap things there. And my entire business has many things hosted on the cloud. And I pay under $30 a month for my entire cloud costs to run everything that I've got. But if I were to need real performance on something, then you can start jumping into a single server costing hundreds of dollars a month. And that server you could probably buy off of eBay for under $200. That is where it really can depend on exactly what you're looking for, because if you need that real performance, that's where the cloud can get very expensive. And you really just kind of have to balance that with how important that uptime is. There's also a privacy component to all of this that I'm just going to have to skip over because it completely depends on your exact needs. I would say most public clouds like Amazon, Microsoft Azure, I would not worry too much from a privacy perspective because if you've got your own VPC, your own virtual private cloud where you've got full access to it, you should be able to configure it to your own security liking. But there is always that question on, well, now you're going through someone else's servers. And now you have to worry about, oh, US law, because a lot of these companies are based in the US, maybe is not friendly to your country. There are pieces in this that you do have to think about if you're looking for that privacy and if you're worried about a long-term solution and things that might be outside of your control. That is the really nice advantage of hosting locally and it's always going to be there. If you host locally, if you've got a server rack in a co-location facility or even something at an office, nobody can come in and say, oh, by the way, sorry, we're now charging extra for this and your price increases 3x you have so much more control over what you're doing. Nobody can just say, yes, yeah, sorry, we don't allow gambling on our platform, removed off. You don't have to worry about these terms of service because you are hosting it yourself. And so that really can be a, a solid advantage of hosting locally. You don't have to worry about misconfiguring a service that starts costing you thousands of dollars in a matter of hours, which happens to startups all the time. You don't have to worry about being locked into a vendor's cloud platform who now is going to charge you $50,000 just to download your data to move to another cloud. You don't have to worry about that lock-in because it is your hardware in your rack, in your location, that you can pretty much control your own destiny. If you screw up and configure it wrong and it goes down, that's on you but you also don't have to worry about somebody else changing policies that affect you that are outside of your control. Well, that's gonna be it for this. As I said, I host a lot of stuff locally and I host a ton of stuff in the cloud and it really just depends on the exact requirement and the need. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comments below and have a good one, bye.